Welcome back, you beautiful people. You join me in a sunny Leger. Actually, the World Cups just happened just down there. But anyway, it's all about six simple skills that's gonna improve your mountain biking today. Let's start off with brakes because we all agree that they'll come pretty useful, especially when you go out there on some more advanced trails or heading out there in the big wide world. So let's do a little rough overview on how to use them properly. First off, let's start off with the front brake. Now the front brake is gonna give you the most stopping power out there on the trail, but it's the one you gotta be extra vigilant about. Why? Because if you just grab a whole handful of it, it's got a tendency to lock up, slide, and wash up from underneath you, especially if the terrain is loose, or it'll send you over the bars into an OTB, and you do not want that. It's all about modulating it. So if you wanna slow down, especially at some high speeds, you wanna pull it in, squeeze it enough to slow you down, but not too much, so you lock that front wheel and you get you slide out, you don't want to do that. Now let's move on to the rear brake. Now this is where you can bust out some of your skid skills or you can be a little bit more forceful with the rear brake. Uh, it's generally about locking up the rear or you can assist with the front to slowing down a lot quicker out there on the trail. Now when you lock up the rear, it's easier to keep under control compared to the front. Try using the brakes simultaneously and practice pulling them both in when riding on the trail and coming up to a sticky situation where you may need to slow down suddenly. So for this, you'd be hard on the front brake to scrub the speed whilst pulling on the back to help get to the correct speed as quickly as possible. So get out there and start practicing your braking because it is crucial point of riding a bike, especially when you come to terrain where you have to descend down mountains Braking is key, but it's super fun to learn how quick you can brake and slow down or how late you can brake into a certain section. Brakes can help. Confidence. It's a skill that takes time to build, but it's a good one to learn. Now, riding a mountain bike takes confidence. It's not just a mental state, but it's a crucial skill to enhance your skills and to ensure safe riding. Developing the skill is an ongoing process. It takes experience, practice, and a good state of mind. It enables riders to push their boundaries and try new techniques. When you believe in your abilities, you're more likely to experiment with advanced skills and techniques, which rapidly increases skill development. When you're confident, you're less likely to tense up or grab the handlebars too tight, which can lead to better bike control and stability. Mountain biking often comes with confronting fear. Whether it's a steep descent just like this one, or a techie feature like this right here. Don't want to do it on the hill. Oh, yeah, nice. Confidence helps riders confront and conquer these fears. It's like a good sense of achievement. I can go on and on about this. Confidence is key. Unweighting that front tire will help you ride rougher stuff faster and smoother. It'll stop you from plowing through and doing some damage to your tire and your wheel. It's all about leaning off the back of the bike and shifting the weight over the rear wheel to lighten that front. Great skill to adapt when it comes to drop-offs and steps out there on the trail. If not applied, this can happen. I highly recommend that you watch one of our how to manual videos. I'll left a link in the description down below. That will help you learn the skill by leaning a lot more off the back, but can help you through some rough stuff. Now, when you've got your front wheel up into the air and you've transferred all of that energy onto the rear, when you're riding a full suspension bike, yes, it's gonna make it a lot smoother because you've got that compliance with that rear suspension as well as your legs. But when it comes to riding a hardtail, that's where you've got to use your legs a lot more. But it does feel a lot smoother instead of just plowing through, letting all that kinetic energy come through that front wheel into your upper body. Lift it up, definitely help you smooth out that trail. When it comes to shifting gears on your bike, you should probably know by now that one way when you shift makes you go faster, the other way gives you more torque, but it makes it easier for you to pedal when it comes to climbing. But sometimes you probably hear this nasty noise coming from down there when you're changing gears. That's one way of your bike saying, stop doing that or I'm gonna hurt you. A lot of the time this happens when you're shifting gears under load. Shifting under loads happens when you're climbing or putting down the power on the pedals. Or when you realize you need to be in a lower gear when it comes to a climb, so you shift gears 
while you're putting a ton of stress on the drivetrain. And with that done, you'll hear this horrible clacking, clanging, nasty noise coming from your drivetrain. And the worst thing that can happen to it is you damage it, and that can be expensive. So, this is how you change gear properly. The solution is, when it comes to climbing, you need to shift into an easier gear. You need to look ahead on the trail to find where you are gonna be pedaling a lot lighter on the pedals. For instance, there's a nice flat bit right here. This is where I will upshift to make my bike go easier for this section of trail right here where it starts to go up over some technical routes. I don't really wanna be doing the change right here because that means I'm gonna be putting a lot of load on that drivetrain. And with that, with a change, it's gonna go clank, clank, and you don't want that because you could potentially snap a chain. Now, when it comes to down the trail, if you were to ride down a hill, but there's gonna be a nice steep climb in the section of trail that you're gonna be riding, you look ahead, you see that's coming, you plan right, there's a steep bit coming, I'm gonna be in a heavy gear now, I can down, I can upshift, make it easier, upshift my gears, so when it comes to that section, I'll be in that nice high gear to get up that little, steep ascent. Pumping a bike is a useful and effective technique. Now we've done a number of different pumping tutorial videos. I've linked one in the description down below if you're still struggling with that. But the way I think of pumping your bike is basically your force input on the bike. You're pushing down on the bike in a roller to maintain your speed, to gain speed. And the whole system movement of basically over a roller, in a dip, or on a jump landing, it's all about kinetic energy. It's about maintaining your speed through the trail. Now that technique is key when you want to gain speed, especially when the, the terrain is a little bit undulated. You can use those undulations to gain more speed out there on the trail. But what I can remember, the earliest application of me learning how to pump is on a park swing. Yes, when you wanna get super high up in the air, you, it's all about timing and about forcing your legs up in the air, tucking them and driving your body weight up. It's exactly the same technique, but on a bike on there. If you can master the swing, I'm sure you can master the pumping technique on your bike. There'll become a time where you feel a bit out of shape on the bike, be it if you misjudged a line or you're a bit out of control out there on the trail. Now, learning the skill of moving your body weight on the bike and maneuvering your bike beneath you is gonna be helpful controlling your bike down the trail. Being confident and comfortable shifting your body weight from side to side, front to back, is definitely gonna keep your bike under control during that ride when you're out there. A great way to combine all of these techniques is go to a corner where you have to shift your body from side to side, or the manual, or the bunny hop, where you're gonna have to shift your body weight all over the place on the bike. Now, get to, get to grips with moving your body weight around the bike, then take it to a bit of a, you know, a tricky situation where you're gonna have to enforce all of these body movements on the trail. When it comes to the steeps, you're gonna move your body weight over the back. When, you come in, when it comes to pumping, you're gonna be going up and down. In the corners, when it's rough, you're gonna be shifting your body or weight all around the bike. You're gonna be dancing. Moving your body weight around the bike is definitely gonna help you fill you with confidence when you're riding some technical trail. Now this one is an absolute doozy and you'll find yourself loving it more than you think and that is pretty essential to help this thing keep in running order. Now I like to call it the M check. Now that means you start down at your mech, you check all your bolts down here and you move up to your seat post by checking all the bolts through that there. Then down to your bottom bracket, checking again. Then from your BB up to your stem. And then from your stem is finishing off with the front wheel. You gotta look after your steed because if you don't, it's not gonna look after you. Now, why is maintenance essential? Well, it's essential because it all boils down to safety. If you maintain your bike, it becomes a more confident bike. If you're confident with your bike and that you know it's in good working order, you're gonna be confident out there on the trail. So there we have it, a few simple tips on how to improve your mountain biking skills out there on the trail. I've probably missed some out, I have, but let us know in the comment section down below what's helped improve your mountain biking. Let's get in there and let's build that community of comments. Help others out. And I'll see you next time. See ya, cup of tea? Cup of tea!